Yeah, well, so am I. 5.30 is where I'm due. Function. Yeah. Tell me what it is. What's that? All right. Off you go. Sorry, I have to give apologies on behalf of Councillor Goff. We are running late, so yeah, I do apologise apologize to everyone. As well. hmm? I've got two apologies as well from Arts Voice. Right. Thank you. Sorry. Thanks. I think... Um, we're, the trouble is, is that because we've got 600 submissions to hear, we give individuals five minutes and organisations ten minutes, but it, you, can't, you can't just have people in front of you for that amount of time. But, so we're, we're just going to have to look at how we hmm. structure the rest of the, rest of the week. Yeah, I, I understand the process, hmm. the, the time. Um, so any, thank you, Mia, and, and thank you, Council, for um, taking the time to listen to my presentation. Um, I'm representing Arts Voice Christchurch, and just uh, so you're aware, Arts Voice Christchurch is an advocacy agency for the arts in Christchurch, has been central to the rebuild, and we're a mixture of a whole range of arts practices. So last year we did a survey on the arts in Christchurch. We surveyed 500 people working in the arts, involved in the arts, and from that survey, much of what I'm going to uh, just summarise and go through came from that. So this is professionals working in the arts at a really high level, but also uh, people coming out of art schools, uh, amateur art groups, etc. So it's intended to be all-encompassing. Uh, so I've just the first image there, I've just put the list of who Arts Voice is. So you'll probably know all these people. Uh, Neil Cox, the Isaac Theatre, myself, um, founded the Chambers 241 Studios and Galleries and have done other arts projects. So it's a visual arts, performing arts. Adam Hayward, director of the Body Festival. So Adam has given his apologies. He can't be here, unfortunately. Uh, Deborah McCormick, director of Escape, who's also put in her apologies. Melanie Oliver from the Physics Room, current director. Martin Trustum, who's now project manor, manager for Otokaro, Art by the River. And Luke DeSoma, the musical director of um, Court Theatre, Christchurch Youth Orchestra, Orchestra. So I'm, I'm mentioning this because we feel quite confident we are representing the voice of the arts in Christchurch. Um, what I wanted to talk about was just to emphasise really the first recommendation that we've put forward for the uh, long-term plan and the importance of that in the sense that the delivery of that really will lead to the, um, I think, the successful outcome for the other recommendations that we have. So I'll, I'm going to talk generally about that. Then I have some images of an arts project that took place late last year in Christchurch, which was highly successful, and I think really shows exactly where the arts are at the moment. They've changed significantly uh, over the last four years, in fact, profoundly, really. Um, so, and then I'll, I'll just finish with a very short summary. So, first of all, the recommendation, Arts Voice strongly urges the Christchurch City Council to prioritise and develop an active activity management plan for the arts, um, and this is to ensure the best outcomes uh, through, uh, through a unified uh, management plan uh, that will nurture better use of resources for the arts by the council and provide shape and structure to a long overdue strategy for the arts. I mean, I, I see the activity management plan and implementation of that for the arts as really a way in which that will actually start to develop, grow and, and make uh, a significant benefit to the arts and their delivery in the city, uh, looking at long and short term priorities. So it will contribute to more efficient administration of the arts and arts organisations and events that the Christchurch City Council are involved in, and it's essential to the delivery of successful outcomes for all of Arts Voice Christchurch's recommendations uh, to the City Council plan. And, and just very briefly, those are collaborative planning between arts organisations, sharing resources, um, essentially a better use of existing resources, prioritising young artists and graduates, their attention in Christchurch, through things like developing relationships between the arts and businesses, giving opportunities to graduates, because they do continue to leave the city, that certainly came through from the survey, uh, for them to be part of the rebuild, to, to reap the benefits of the rebuild as artists, designers and, and, and creative thinkers. Their skills and knowledge also can be brought in, not just to festivals and events that the City Council are involved with, but also in, into the services that the City Council operate as well. And The other uh, recommendation was 
addressing the issue around facilities and for the arts at the moment. That came through very strongly from the survey last year as of real concern. The underlying, the key fact that came through really was all arts organisations are still concerned after four years about the lack of uh, good facilities or any facilities at all uh, for the arts. So enabling progress on the Performing Arts Centre, uh, Arts Precinct and reviewing existing and potential facilities for the arts. So those recommendations that I've just mentioned are really, I see them as being very much part of a much broader infrastructure and one that would be um, you know, successfully implemented through an activity management plan for the arts. Um, we are the second largest city in New Zealand and we're, it's surprising we don't actually have a comprehensive art strategy. There is a strategy, but I think it's 2002, 2003, maybe a little later, but it's a, it's a very, it was outdated then and essentially the city continues to operate without a strategy for the arts. It makes particularly good sense at the moment because in 2015 the arts are a key contributor to revitalising the central city with new spaces, events and festivals and you, you'll all be aware of those and I've mentioned those in the um, submission as well. It's not just the inner city that's changed, it's also the arts in the city as well. So very briefly, what's happened to the arts over the last four years is that you now have a far more diverse and inclusive range of arts activities. There are new galleries new performances, new events. There's the development of working relationships between arts organisations. They are already starting to share resources and with good outcomes. Uh, the arts have extended their presence into more public and privately owned spaces. In fact, in the city's history, the arts have never been so visible, and you will all know that, you will have all experienced that too. They're represented in music by more choirs in the city than it's ever had, uh, orchestras, greater musical activity. This is Luke de Soma's claim, I'll take his word, is that Christchurch is the best place in New Zealand for community-centred music. It's also seen more people in the arts, involved in the arts in Christchurch, but the public in general participating in dance as a recreational activity. There are stats on that as well. And overall the arts have been char characterised by a very inventive and strong new attitude over the last four years. And finally, they provide very good reasons, key reasons in fact, for people to come into the inner city uh, and re-engage with it in meaningful ways. Um, I've been involved in, I've gone through that, I've been involved in setting up First Thursdays in Sydenham, which is a, an arts event encompassing music, performance, uh, exhibitions, uh, for one night, and it takes place three times a year. First one was held on the 2nd of October, and we've, I've done a survey on that, and also the following one we held in February this year. The next one's in June, but I do have some stats to give you, just to give you a sense of how we see the arts working. So I'll run these pictures. So we had an estimated five and a half to 6,000 people at the first first Thursdays in October last year. 40% were in or lived in or around Sydney, uh, and 55% were from the wider part of Christchurch. So that event attracted people into, into Sydney for a night out. 58% identified the highlight of the evening as actually being in Sydney. The bustle of being there, the enjoyment of the city, the cafes, the good food, and exploring the precinct. And I, that was a real success for the arts because the arts were there. They were the thing that drew them in. But it was great to see that those community outcomes, and you could actually see them going, if you were there, going through the street. People were having a, a great evening. 32% did identify the highlight as artworks, um, live music, pop-up exhibitions, we also ran art tours. And I think this was really interesting, 94% of those that went to the first one said they were moderate visitors to Sydney, or occasional or not at all. So you know, in terms of the way in which that event acted to reintroduce people in Christchurch to that precinct or that area, I think it was really significant. Uh, we've got an estimated spend of 85,000 in the evening with 87% of those attending purchasing something. And talking to the retailers, um, I think that's a fairly, it's a, a, that's a relatively accurate figure. Um, there's just some comments. We also interviewed people what they thought of it. Uh, they overwhelmingly positive, I think it was 99%. So we had someone say it was amazing, I'll be there every time. Uh, a wonderful event for Christchurch and Sydney. I hope it will inspire other events like this across Christchurch, Mount continue and grow. Uh, great evening and so neat to see the streets of Buzz and people out and enjoying the city. Happy faces, families, young folk appreciating art and music, brilliant. Can't wait till next time. And the last one, this was from the most recent one we, we ran in February. First Thursdays was one of those very special things happening around Christchurch, absolutely fantastic. 
So that, that person put both those exclamation marks in, not me. Sorry? Oh, it's the 4th of June, and it'll be... Oh, five, five until nine. Yeah. So it's called Paper, Scissors, Rock and Roll. Um, so we have, um, you know, there's the evidence of the way in which there's a lot of collaboration going on between the various arts organisations for that event, a lot of goodwill, and, and a very much a public art out on the street event. I mean, this is a really interesting development in the arts that I think you know, could form part of a, an important part of a strategy. The other thing I wanted to mention too is that last year, um, the Arts Voice made a presentation to Communities Housing and Economic Development Committee on the 4th of December, and that was to report on the strategy, which I've referred to. From that meeting, a recommendation was made by the committee and the, the recommendations in the minutes to ensure that the arts continue to proactively contribute to the rebuild of Christchurch and connect meaningfully with our communities. Uh, we accept the Arts Voice offer to work with the Council, central government and others to make these things happen in a proactive way that combines strategy, advocacy, funding and continued support for action. So you know, it, it, as well as the evidence we have here, there is also an expression of commitment too from the Council um, that, I, that I wanted to mention. So, I, I mean, I feel really confident to state that the recommendations on Arts Voice Christchurch submission, they're made with the best interest of residents and the Council and the Arts at heart. So I urge the Council to prioritise and develop an activ activity management plan for the Arts as being the first step towards achieving more efficient and even better delivery of outcomes to the City by all Arts organisations with the best use of resources and definitely through the best strategies. It's a little known fact, but um, with restart and part of the success of restart, I have to say, and I want to say it publicly, is that um, I had a conversation um, with Deborah McCormick, which then led on a conversation with Warren and Chris Herbert, and we set up uh, a thing called Artbeat, Artbeat. Mm. which was highly successful, and it showed the integration between the arts and business is so critical to actually create a really cool environment where people come along and actually be surprised. And the, uh, as I say, I, I, I don't think it's been said that often about uh, part of the success of Restart was through the collaboration with the Arts, uh, Arts Voice and uh, I just want to say that publicly and, and I think what you're doing there is great. And I just think as a council we need to think about how we work with them to actually achieve more good results and maybe in other areas like New Brighton like Sumner and other areas, Littleton, how we can actually integrate this right throughout the fabric of our city. Thanks, Roy. This, um, sorry, no, sorry. Uh, just very quickly, um, this project, First Thursdays, is actually, it evolved from Artbeat. So the people that were working on Artbeat, I was still one of them, the same people that have been involved with this one. So thank you. Turnover of young people in the city is affecting, if at all, the growth and um, being able to sustain the arts sector. I mean, after four or five years, it's everyone's still tired, but you need that youth. And yeah. uh, What do you think? Um, it's, we don't have stats on that, but again, with the survey uh, that we took, undertook last year, that did come through, that artists, young people are leaving Christchurch. And, and I know I had 18 months working in Wellington 2012-2013, a number of artists I knew from Christchurch moved up. I mean, I ran into them, but it, just by word of mouth, I guess, and what, what I could see is, um, yes, artists, young artists are leaving, and, and they're still leaving, and uh, that was something expressed by a number of uh, people from Arts Voice too. And, I mean, Luke DeSimer, in terms of music, that was one of his concerns. I know. <laughs> yeah, uh, but, but yes, it is, it is a, um, still a reality. Um, yeah, I mean, it's important to... to fight that and retain people. And, and I think the interesting thing with this project is that it actually, it's being really curated, put together by recent graduates from Canterbury. So there is some, yeah, but it is happening. Phil. Thanks, Warren. 15 seconds, I hope. Um, look, thank you. And I'm just one, like it's just, um, the, the program project has just done so much for Sydney. And I'm just thinking, after sort of an event um, like um, First Thursdays, especially groups like yours may be a bit short of some part of the funding. Not, not encouraging double dipping, but ha have you um, 
have you approached the community board in the event of um, needing some extra funding for a, another part of the programme? No, no not, not at the moment, yeah. no. But thank, thank you for that. We are actually looking, we've got, I had a good meeting today with um, interest from, I uh, can't say who, but we've got good interest outside central local government resources for the next one, so. Thank you very much. Thanks. Can I, can I just comment on the, um, the, the just the, the, the what, you, what you've been saying around the need for a, an art strategy or plan and, um, you know, like its own activity management plan, although I hate mm. the idea of an activity management plan, but that's for another reason. Um, but the idea of having a, a kind of a, um, a review of, 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 of policy in an overarching way. I mean, I want to look at the whole... Um, yeah, decision-making framework around this. So we, we, we've got the community funding grants. We, we're kind of looking at them and how do we get a more holistic, you know, longer-term mm. funding, secure stream across different funders, et cetera, et cetera. And um, what I'm kind of feeling here, though, is is more of a more of a strategic approach. So maybe maybe I mean, and I know that Phil mentioned this before about having a um, a, a, a group, you know, made up of councillors, arts representatives, and um, and arts advisors within the council, to to try and get a, a holistic and joined up decision making framework mm. as well. So, um, so I want to kind of take that offline and 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 say that we want to address that in a in a in a very real way, but it won't necessarily be as part of the LTP process, but mm. the next next iteration of where we go. Yeah. I mean, what you're describing was what was proposed in, in, in that recommendation in mm. December, really, about mm. uh, good conversations, discussion with good information coming through about how best to proceed with the strategy for the arts. Yeah, I, the, I, we had a briefing the other day from um, Sarah on the um, project that Martin's involved in, you know, which, you know, I have to say that I, I sat there and listened to it and thought, why is Sarah, the temporary sort of recovery authority, creating another mm -hmm. vehicle for something that we already do as a city? So, um, so I've started that conversation with them um, because, uh, to me, I think that there are there are insufficient, um, you know, sort of minutes in a day and and hours in a week for another structure to be set yeah. up. Um, and then for them to look for a way of integrating it into what's already existing as part of um, this transition, and I'd, I'd rather cut that off at the pass and mm. find a way through that. Okay, thank you for that. Look, I won't. I've just one final comment yep. on that, and that is that working in the arts, and I've had this discussion with a lot of people. It's really interesting because you've got these big players. You know, just thinking of Sarah. Yeah. But in fact, artists and people working in the arts tend to operate between all these different levels. They'll yep. be working at an artist-run space, which is run on virtually nothing, and then they'll also be involved in projects. And you know, it's a very uh, sort of organic and holistic yep. um, business. Uh, this working in the arts, so all yep. of it feeds into outcomes at lots of different levels. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thanks. Um, Andre, I'm really sorry. You know, I'm sorry to everyone that is. It's taken a lot longer.